Midjourney has a brand new update that lets you upload your own images and use its generative engine to edit them, as well as restyle them. It's a fantastic upgrade and levels up the kinds of things you can do in Midjourney. So in this video, not only will I show you how to use each of the features on this new editor interface, but I will also show you how to combine them with existing features and completely transform even the most basic images into astonishing results. Before we start, I do want to give a quick disclaimer. The feature set I'm talking about today is obviously brand new. Anything I show you is subject to change. Also, it's not available to everyone yet. I have access because I've generated more than 10,000 images. What have I become? But if you're not as crazy as I am, you'll either need to have been a subscriber for the past year or be paying for a yearly membership. My feeling is if you don't have it already, it's probably not worth making a full year payment just to access it. But that's your call. I'll show you everything it can do, and you get to make that decision depending on your budget. My guess, based on Midjourney's typical release schedule, is you'll probably get access to it in the next few weeks, and I wouldn't worry about spending money just to get it. For all the rest of you, if you do have it, you'll see a new tab here on your Midjourney Alpha homepage. The tab will be called Edit, if you're zoomed in too far, you might only see this little pen edit icon. That's where you'll access this feature. Click into it, and you should see something like this screen here, or if you're on this screen, you can click the Edit New Image button, and this will show up. At this point, you have two options. You can click Edit from URL, and this lets you enter the image URL of any image on the internet to use in the Midjourney editor. Just paste it in right here and you can do that. Otherwise, you'll be using Edit Uploaded Image. You can either click here to open your Windows Explorer or you can drag an image from anywhere else onto the screen. The two new features and the whole reason behind this interface are for the Edit feature and the Retexture feature. You can see these two tabs right here. Edit is essentially what everyone has been asking Midjourney to add for ages. What it lets you do is upload an embarrassing image of yourself as an adult man pretending to be a wizard. This feature then lets you ask Midjourney to make it look like you're doing real magic. That way you can trick all your friends into thinking you're an actual wizard. So dumb. Let's reset this image and show you in the interface how you can actually go about doing this. So. The first thing I would always suggest doing is setting the aspect ratio. Right when you start, you're stuck at an image scale right at 100%. But if you click any of these aspect ratios here, you actually unlock that aspect ratio so you can go to any range you want, which is really handy when you do indeed have more pixels to work with. So now we can play around with move and resize. Clicking this button is basically equipping a cursor that gives you motion control within this canvas. This way, you can drag around the image, you can adjust the scale with these handles, and you can change the shape of the canvas with these ones. And now we're on the erase button. This is a different cursor that instead of letting you drag the image around, you're actually erasing parts of the image. What you're really doing here is selecting the part of the image that you want Midjourney to generate on top of. Maybe they want me to say, the part you want Midjourney to edit for you. Anyway, left click to draw a region right like this. You can zoom in and out to change the size of your brush. Of course, you can also use this brush size option here. And then obviously this is the restore brush, which works exactly the same, except it's telling Midjourney what you don't want it to change. And you can restore anything you've erased. Undo and redo work like normal. You also have shortcuts, so you can use Control or Command Z to undo and Control or Command Y to redo. These sliders are again an alternative way to control your brush size and canvas size. Then the last button here is the same as slash describe in Midjourney. All it does is it writes a prompt describing the image that you uploaded. So here it says, a photo of a man with short, dark brown ha hair and a blue flannel short performing Tai Chi with his hands open to the sky, outdoors in the California mountains on a summer day. It's not exactly accurate, nor is it what we need, because what's actually more important is that you describe the way you want the image to change, not just the way it currently is. 
So if instead of a plasma ball, you wanted an epic jet of fire, you would have to describe that jet of fire in your prompt. Notice we've erased the sort of area between his hands, and maybe we can extend the jet of fire to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio by going out like this. Here, let me, I meant to erase that. And hopefully we can see a jet of fire continuing from this image when we click this button, Submit Edit. You can also click Enter to submit a generation. Also, as you can see over here on the right, all of the edits you've made for this image will show up. So you can see the plasma images, and now that these are done generating, you can also see the fire that I conjured, and then actually use these as the starting point for any of the future edits you want to make, right? You can erase in this image, or you can erase in this image and change anything you could possibly want. If you click between them again, your change is reset. But yeah, clicking on these four images, obviously they're not perfect, but they're pretty cool if you want to directly edit your image. You could erase a bit here and give yourself a bow tie or add anything you want into your image. What's disappointing about it is whenever you do it this way, your results have this kind of edited look, right? You could take a picture and add a monster into it, and it looks cool, but it doesn't turn the image into the horror scene that it should be. Because... In order to change the lighting, mood, or style of an image within the editor, you would need to erase way too much. Think about it. When the lighting in an image changes, so does every single pixel. So the moment you try to take yourself from a plain white wall into a complex cyber scene, it looks less like an epic cityscape and more like an underwhelming zoom background. And so that is the reason for this second feature. In theory, retexture is supposed to analyze your scene and understand the objects and shapes, including hopefully what they represent. Midjourney will lock your image into a depth map, which if everything goes well, lets it change the lighting and materials within your image without disrupting any of the content. This is really cool and there are a ton of awesome use cases for it. Midjourney's announcement actually shows you how you can transform a statue into reimagined versions of that same statue in any style. Or they also show you redecorating a room so it seems like it's from far into the future. But my channel has recently been focused on character. And that's because I think the most exciting things you can create in Midjourney are people. So in my opinion, I think it's natural to wish that when I start with an image of myself casting a fireball and then retexture it so that the vibrance and power of the fireball is more visible in the image, I would want the result to continue to be of me. And unfortunately, when I try it, that simply isn't the case. Retexture turns each of its generated images into entirely different people. It's cool. The lighting of my image changes, and the pose stays the same. But that's not really what I'm after. Luckily, there is hope for us. Midjourney says these new features are compatible with personalization, sref, cref, and image prompts. And what that means is that we have a few more tools in our arsenal to overcome this problem I'm running into. When working with character-focused images, you can think of retexture kind of like a pref or pose reference. And even for complex poses, in my experience, 50 to 75% of the images I generate transfer the pose pretty well. So it's not perfect, but it is pretty good. What's exciting is that on top of pose, you can also bring in other kinds of references to layer into your generation request. So even if we click new and start working on a new image in the editor, even if it's actually a pretty boring image of me making a bit of a silly face like this one, we can use the editor to control the aspect ratio and really change anything to our liking. Then when we like the pose and the content of the image, we can go into this retexture interface. If we click this image icon, we can use any of the references we've uploaded into Midjourney before. So if I like this face I've generated, but I want it to be of this medieval farmer girl with a messy bun, I can just click on all four of these images, set them as character references, right like that, 
and just write a short prompt describing her making the same silly face. Then I can click this button, Submit Retexture, and wait for it to generate, and hopefully the image will turn into my uploaded character. Starts looking something like me. The messy bun starts to come in, and look at that. I have four images with my evil smirk, head tilted forward, keeping the same pose, but obviously my consistent character has been applied to this scene. So now the solution for getting the character to keep looking like you is obvious. And we'll go back and do it with the actual fireball example we've been working with. What you'll need is a bunch of images of yourself to use as a reference. So you can copy them from anywhere, or even just drag them into the editor directly, or if you've used them in Midjourney before, you can pick them out from the, by clicking this image icon. However you go ahead and do it, you now have a consistent character reference that Midjourney can apply to an image of yourself. And it's feeling a lot better until you generate it. Once it comes up, you realize there is one more problem we're going to have to deal with. The C-Ref you get here is looking pretty close to how you look. I think both of these two images could possibly be me. But it's just not quite there. I've seen Midjourney generate much better faces before, and I really wish we could have a higher quality result. And if you've watched a few of my recent videos, you might have a clue to what the problem here is. This comes down to what I've been calling prominence. The face in this image is just too small to do a good job surviving the style transfer. If we want a high quality C-Ref, like we got when we generated our farmer with, mess with a messy bun, we need our face to begin just as close up as from when we generated that image. If you want the highest quality result, you're going to need to start from a place where your face takes up about half of the image. And to do that, we're going to, need to begin again from our original image here. I'll go ahead and click reset now. And, and actually, we'll be using the very first thing I taught you about this editor. Remember how you can't zoom out any more than the edge here? Well, unless you click this button, and then Midjourney lets you break the lock. We're going to zoom in to our scene so our face takes up a little more of the image here. What I'm having you do is zoom in just far enough so that Midjourney can see all the details of your face, but not so far that you lose the pose completely. See how my arm is still coming out from the top here, and it really looks like I'm looking off in this far off direction? That's going to be perfect. Now we can erase anything we need to. For me, I'm just going to give myself a little bit more of a wizardry type robe here, and we're going to generate that image. The next thing to do is to retexture this image so that it makes sense that I would be staring at a fireball. So here on the retexture tab, I'm going to place my prompt back in, and even though my fireball wouldn't be on the screen yet, I want my face to be glowing with mystical fire, and so I'm going to write that into the prompt with these C-refs in place. And so now you can see here, I have four generated images that look much closer to an image of me where I might be casting a fireball. And so only now am I actually able to pick one of these images, go back to the editor, and zoom out, creating a scene where I'm casting a fireball. I'm going to erase a little bit more, see if I can get some of my arm pose back into this image. When I write that prompt and generate again, you can see how I'm much closer to the result I was after. And looking at these four images, it looks like I didn't get that balance quite right. <laughs> it seems like Midjourney totally lost my pose, and having one hand going up over my head was just beyond Midjourney's capability. So instead, I'd probably want to generate me with my hand in place and generate an image more like these so that the pose is a little bit more fixed. And then I can paste a prompt back in and then generate again to see my face glowing with fire. We can submit this edit. Whoops, I 100% meant for that to be a retexture. Please stop. Oh my God, I'm misclicking all over the place. All right, submit retexture. And hopefully this time our pose is a little bit better defined, allowing us finally to return to the editor 
erase out our character references and generate our image one more time. I have a lot of hope for this one. I look at that. Finally, I found myself on the epic side of embarrassment. That is way, way cool. Um, I'm tempted now to zoom out a little bit one more time and just finish this off as an extremely powerful wizard casting a truly awesome spell. Hopefully you can see that this is both finicky and yet extremely powerful. If you liked this deep dive into a cool mid-journey feature, I have a ton more on my channel. The YouTube algorithm thinks you'll like this one over here. And come on, it's the YouTube algorithm. It's all knowing. Might as well give it a shot. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.